Divers are able to create a tiny splash when hit in the water, even when diving from a height of 10 meters. A tiny splash is an indication of a well-performed dive, and it therefore affects the final score. Apart from being fascinating, understanding the fluid mechanics behind the size of the splash can help improve the performance of professional divers. Let's start with describing what a splash actually is. A splash is a sudden disturbance of the surface of a liquid, which happens when a solid object hits the surface, but also when moving liquid supplies energy, or when a liquid droplet impacts on a liquid or solid surface. If it's hit hardly, even the sand can produce a splash. The splash is related to the shape, the velocity and mass of the object, how hydrophilic it is, and to the viscosity of the fluid. In this video, we focus on the velocity and shape of the object. The fluid is water, which is incompressible. So now that we know this, let's have a look at the dive creating these splashes in the water. What influences the size of the splash? The dive can be divided into two components, before hitting the water and after. Before hitting the water, the divers take on this position with their hands turned around and interlace towards the water. That doesn't seem like the most obvious hand position. Why do the divers not point their hands? In order to understand this position called the rip entry, we're going to have a look at what happens when different shapes hit the water. With a sphere, we observe the formation of a large air cavity in the water, and so there is a lot of splash afterwards. This is due to the significant surface contact area with water. The area to volume ratio is small for a shape forming a big splash. The water flows around the edge of the sphere with a speed proportional to the speed of the sphere. Splash is reduced if we put a smaller sphere before the bigger one, which forms a first cavity where the second sphere can enter, reducing impact forces. We can relate this little sphere to the divers putting their hands in first. For a sharp object, water is compressed in a direction perpendicular to the inclined surface, but the surrounding water restrains this and water starts moving up along the edges, creating more splash. For a rectangular shape, we see a large ca cavity, but not as big as for the sphere. There is a large surface area, therefore the object decelerates rapidly after hitting the surface. But, if we consider a smaller surface breaking the water, it would create less splash, which is what we want. And if the impact velocity of the rectangular shape is greater than the velocity of the water going along the vertical surfaces, almost no water splash is formed. So this shape is interesting in order to minimize the splash. An ellipsoid is also good because it's quite narrow, the surface area that breaks the water is smaller, and a smaller air cavity is formed. Moreover, the air cavity is also very narrow, so air bubbles don't hit the surface all at once. The hands of the divers create a rectangular-like shape, and by arching the back a little bit and keeping the rest of the body tight and streamlined, an ellipsoid-like shape is conceived. During the second part of the splash, two components become important, named the air cavity and the Worthington jet. Cavitation is the rapid formation and collapse of vapor bubbles within a liquid. A Worthington jet is a splash in the middle of air cavity that occurs when this cavity created by a falling object collapses. The presence of the air cavity is going to determine the size of the splash after it collapses. Its presence depends on whether the water loses contact with the surface or not. This depends on how hydrophilic the sphere is and on the speed of the water flowing on the surface of the sphere. For humans, the creation of air cavity is unavoidable, although it is already minimized by the rip entry. Reducing the Worthington jet is done by minimizing the air connected to the air cavity. Divers do this by moving their arms in the same way swimmers do in the breaststroke. This displaces air pockets outwards and gives the thrust to do a quick water sweep. This breaks up the air further and traps a lot of it around the diver's body. A perfectly executed dive from the 10 meter platform will thus not result in a pronounced Worthington jet, but in a bubbly water surface. 